BetEasy.com.au, our big sponsor of this event. And also our tail of the tape about to come up. This is going to be an absolute beauty of a fight. It's Kay Cara France, an extremely uh, fantastic name, of course, taking on Gustavo Falcaroli. Falcaroli, extremely short favourite, the most favoured fighter on the BetEasy.com.au fight card. $1.20, France, $4.50. Uh, Jose Lopez, uh, Peter Graham, as we overlook the uh, tail of the tape, 31-year-old uh, Bell Corolla here, he's fought a lot of great fighters, he's 14 and 4, very uh, distinguished career, and uh, the 20 year old France has got a huge, huge task here today in Melbourne. You know what, uh, you know, as a young fighter I fought a guy here in Melbourne, his name was Stan the Man Long and he was my fourth pro fight. You know, it was the first loss I ever suffered, but if you want to be the champ and you want to go all the way, you better step the fuck up, or step back. And uh, France here, this is a big, big test for him as we go to Jono Armand at centering. Great to have Jose Lopez and Pete Graham here in commentary. What a nice bend here so far at the Melbourne Pavilion for AFC 7. We're going to keep the action coming your way, flight fans. Here we go. Fight number seven. Introducing out of the red corner, please welcome Kai Kara France. Let me tell you something. Me personally, when I, when I was fighting back in the States, if someone came in more to a soft song, more soft, hardest song, it, it hit me in the inside. Like, oh, this guy's coming in for real. But someone that came in with a little corny, a little heavy metal too hard, all right, that's typical, you know what I mean? That, that's the average fight that comes out to that. But someone that comes out, let's say to Mariah Carey, I'm gonna be like, okay, what's wrong with this person? Someone's coming out to Mariah Carey, man, I'm going, <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this fight and then I'm gonna disappear. <laughs> I'm gonna be real nice to them no matter what happens, just in case they turn up in my lounge room sure. with, a, with a axe or something. 20 year old taking on a 31 year old. Uh, but as you said, Kate, a big experience uh, uh, fight this is gonna be for Kay Kara. Friends, $4.50 on Bet Easy. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, Gustavo Falciroli. Gustavo Falcaroli, what an entourage he has. This man is the real deal, that's for sure. A very impressive career so far. And great to have Gustavo here at AFC 7. I had to say uh, last night, the way is a lot of the uh, the audience is stunned by the blue hairstyle of Gustavo here. Pete, you've been involved with that fighting so much. What do you think of the masks here for uh, <laughs> Gustavo? Very entertaining. Great show, he's a great show, man. I love it. You know, I'm in no ground, uh, no uh, position, rather, to say anything about blue hair or bad haircuts. So I've had one or two. <laughs> I didn't want to bring that up, uh, Chief, but. Uh, it is very interesting, the blue hairstyle. We've got the Punisher coming out after. Let's go to John Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Bout number seven, proudly sponsored by Fuji and Zebra. Zebra, Sibley, Zebest. Introducing first. Fighting out of the red corner, trained by Aaron Boys and Brian Ebersole out of Tiger Muay Thai and Strike Force in New Zealand. He brings us a professional fight record of seven wins and three losses. He is a mixed martial artist. Please welcome Kai Kara France. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Diego Stevenuti. He brings to us a fight record of 14 wins, 4 losses and 2 draws. He is trained out of Gurudai Jiu-Jitsu. He is a mixed martial artist. He is Gustavo Faxiroli. Both fighters centering for final instructions. Okay, lads, I've gone over all the rules of the rooms. Let's have a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Listen to my instructions at all times. Touch gloves now if you wish. Come out fighting. Also, I feel Gustavo Falcrioli. Gustavo looks good to go, though. Look, he's out to get in there. He really Here we go. Melbourne Pavilion. Now, Second out. a little bit worried, but doesn't look like he's going to get out in the ring in a hurry, though, does it? <laughs> Jono Armand doing a great job one. as a ring announcer, but um, Gustavo nice yesterday, guys, at the Wayne really was trying to intimidate uh, France too. Uh, he was just staring, he was in his face. So uh, these are probably some of the tactics that uh, the, the more experienced fighter use against a kid like this, uh, Pete and Jose. Yeah, Absolutely. I, 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 to I, totally, I totally agree, I totally agree. I mean, he's doing the right thing, trying to get away from the clinch, but that's what like Gustavo's trying to go for, uh, a takedown, uh, put his jiu-jitsu to the test. Yeah, I mean, I mean, jiu-jitsu guys, you know, exploit your, your strengths. If you're good at jiu-jitsu, do it. If you're a good striker, you should strike. 
He's doing very well so far. Very well. In France, defending. Defending but very he well. He wants to be here. Last place he wants to be here now is giving his back to a good BJJ practitioner and uh, Gustavo. Absolutely. Yes. France uh, trying to get a hold in those wrists here, breaking Gustavo's grip, which he's doing well. And uh, Gustavo actually talking to the referee halfway into this, saying should we go into the middle? His head is actually leaning out of the rope here. He's and this is once again where body. the safety of the fighters... He's got a body triangle, but uh, France is doing the right thing and leaning towards the lock. Put a little pressure on Gustavo on his, on his uh, ankle. And if you're ever going to test the 20-year-old uh, guys, this is where a position where it's going to be experienced. Uh, a fighter like Fel Caroli is going to have a huge, huge advantage over the young kid, right. France. This is really not the position France needs to be in. But then again, Gustavo needs to, you know, to improve his position. He needs to keep working to try to finish it. I you, agree. Know, you don't just want him to sit there. You got to, you, like I said before, you got to fight to win. If, if Jiu Jitsu is your game, then you got to go and get it. You got to choke him out, rip his arms and legs off. Trying to get an advantage here, giving him some light punches to the head just to try to uh, get France to release some of that on some uh, blows there, getting through the guard there at France. Referee right in front of both fighters. And the ground game of Gustavo so early, showing some dominant dominance here. And uh, can he get some underhooks here? No. Will he go over the top? Wow. Oh, he could have an arm, but oh, can he slam here? France. Very oh. good. Yeah, Very good, good defense there by France. But now he's looking for uh, maybe a heel hook here, Gustavo. Oh, yeah. No, he's done the right thing. France has got his head. He's good from here. I mean, Gustavo's obviously got a great idea of what to do. But France, he's a kid who wants to win. I like that. And Gustavo again, trying to get that dominant position on the man of side control here. And young France again escapes. Very That's good it. by France. This is where he needs to be right here. Now he needs to work really hard. And obviously the height and reach advantage for Gustavo. Good Going man. after that injured knee, I mean... Peter, what do you think? If you if you go into a fight and you see someone with an injured knee like this, would you would you go for the attack? Absolutely. Exploit anything you have. I wouldn't try to hurt his knee per se, but I'd smash that leg. <laughs> I agree. And going it. for it. That's what he needs to do. Hey, Once you... that front leg's gone, they can't box properly, they can't kick properly, uh, properly they can't shoot on it. Smash that front leg. For sure. Guys, is an right condition. hand. And Gustavo here. France finding a little success here and some striking in the stand-up. Very smart of him to be circling, getting out. He needs to circle out of there. Beautiful. Very beautiful there. Gustavo should use his range, come back a little bit, make uh, France come, come to him. Correct. I think that'll be a little easier for him. And is this because of you know, confidence and so much more experience? Gustavo may be uh, doing something that he probably hasn't been trained to do, guys. There's a possibility. Should never be overconfident, not against anyone. Always stick to your game plan and keep doing it. Exploit your strengths, work on your weaknesses. And after a All dominant time. start by Gustavo, I just Very uh, good by France to get out of that clinch right away. He does not want to be. That's not his world. No, bit, I agree. Bit of confidence by uh, France, but... Uh, circling out of... He's doing a very good job of circling out of that clinch. He is. Putting his back against the ropes. But then it, what he should do, once he gets that, just exactly what he did, back out. Get some spice. That's it. Chip away at it. He's, he was having some success with some leg kicks. He should go inside and outside. Exactly. Keep attacking that leg. Now, France has got nice big legs. Put that weight behind it, smash it in. And have to land two or three of them. On three or four, yeah. really take any spring Gustavo has any step I out. I agree 100%. For the rest of the fight. He'd have some real power, this kid. And uh, some sort of a kid at that age. Don't know their Beautiful strength. Beautiful uppercut, uppercut there. Don't know how hard they can actually hit. Gustavo again, really haunting him though. This is the takedown he wanted to try to get. Oh, and then nearly at the ropes. And the corner <laughs> of uh, France. Very good takedown oh. defense by France. Great balance. Great effort here by France. Ten seconds left here in the first round. Good, good knee. knee. With his bad knee. Good spin oh. here. Oh, no, no, this is no, where no, the safety no, once again. You get old saying, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, it does. And we're, we're fortunate enough to have the Minister of Sport here, and I think he's here really to encourage the cage, which is fantastic. Uh, uh, John from the Victorian government. So uh, this is sponsored once again by beteasy.com.au. That was a fantastic first round. I got to give that first round to France. I mean, he had more damage going into the striking. Uh, 
Gustavo had a little bit of success on the ground, but it didn't last long. But my opinion, I got to give that round to France. You know, I, I, I slightly disagree. I think uh, France dominated the stand-up. I think Gustavo, uh, you know, dominated on the ground. Yeah. And for about the same distance of time. Yeah. Uh, but I know what I'm saying. But, you know, if uh, France stays on his feet for the rest of this, uh, this next round and doesn't get his back taken like he did in the first half of the first round, yeah. He'll win this round. Right, the second down. Extremely close round, guys. It's uh, good to see both of you. Uh, so you so, uh, this is going to be an extremely important round. But the, uh, you'd say the confidence now, France guys, would probably be uh, a lot more than a... You've got to be optimistic before a first round, but a lot more confident than he probably was before round one. Yeah, once you nail that first round, you go, OK, no, no, oh. Round two. Actually, yeah. Yeah, I'm in with a chance. Yep. Gustavo, oh, comes in extremely hard. Foul Crioli, the experienced 31-year-old. He's fought across the, the world. He's very established here in Australia, taking on the young kid, France. France doing an excellent job in circling, all right? Doesn't want to stay put. Doesn't want his back against the fence. Superman punch. Excuse me, the ropes, but we should be saying the fence. <laughs> and this is sponsored once again by BetEasy.com.au. Oh, he got some power, this kid, very France. Very good. Finding good success right now. Ah. You're exactly what we were saying before. Now he seems a little bit more confident. He's willing to throw a little harder. And he's strong. He's got that whizzer on and he's not letting go. Look, he wants it. In the corner there of Gustavo Falcaroli. Shout out some instructions here. Unfortunately, my Portuguese is not that good. <laughs> and France I nearly he's gets come up on Oh, it's now. a great effort. Very good by France. Got that wizard on. That's going to be huge confidence for France to be able to defend someone's jiu-jitsu at that caliber of Gustavo. That's got to that's got to boost France's confidence. He's got to start doing. You know, you're you're got a great boxing background, but the circling and the keeping his distance is what was successful for him. That there second part. That's the, what he needs to do. Continue there. He tried it again, but uh, I think he wore a light one there. Oh, good uppercut by Gustavo. There puts him on the back foot. I don't think Gustavo liked that last leg kick. Doesn't seem impressed by it, does he? But that's exactly what France should do, smash that front leg. I mean, geez, that last one, you know, almost got through to the other leg. And, and has he slowed down a bit in that front left knee, guys, uh, Gustavo? Is he, is he, has just uh, probably about four or five kicks that have connected. Oh, big right there. And now France goes for the takedown. Sprawls at it. Sprawled done easily by Gustavo. Both taking their times here, yeah. to get his back off that off the ropes yeah, and the young around. Gustavo has been smart though he looked a little tired he, he uh, changed the pace of the fight. oh as they both oh. Uh, how many times are we going to see this and, and have to explain to people why if they were ever going to fall out the ringers in front of our fantastic first impression model staff there a good thing and a bad thing Cor <laughs> correct uh but the safety of the fighters is integral here. Both are uh, okay there. And uh, all of a sudden, France, with some confidence on the feet, wants to keep that distance. Good right again by the young 20-year-old. I like how France throws uh, shots from different angles. And his lower leg kicks are good. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Attack that knee. And they, Attack that lead leg. Can they be scoring enough for the judges? Both rounds extremely close. This one, and oh, a good right and left there by Gustavo. Oh, and oh, oh, he's got him in the head there. And his Gustavo. head actually hit the table. Uh, after Hopefully he from the, the knee. Are, his the head's knee actually hit, hit the table as well. It's all over! See, that is just unfortunate. It was becoming a good fight. He has a head injury because he fell off the ring. You know, it... Uh, <sighs> You know, hopefully because uh, we were saying before that the minister is here, hopefully you can see the practicality of why it is in a cage and not in a ring. Um, hey. I mean, you as a fighter, Peter, if you want to fight in that fashion, would you be satisfied with a win like no, that? No, not at all. You know, I want to win. You know, I've been fighting for <laughs> 20 years, right? I've been fighting for 20 years. Uh, I don't get points taken off me. I don't need a cheat to win. I love to fight. And I, I'm a, 
I mean, no one wants to win like that. You want to win and say, you don't want anyone saying, ah, oh, but he did this one, he exactly. did that. You want to go, man, you beat him under the rules and, and you're an animal. Taking none away from Gustavo, well deserved, but I mean, me personally, I gotta agree with you, Peter. I don't think I can be celebrating just as hard with a win like that with someone who just fell out, hurt his head maybe. We don't know what the injury is. Hopefully, France is okay. France looks okay. Gustavo, you know, most impressive, I mean, he's a jiu-jitsu guy, but his boxing was good, man. It was pretty Very tight. Good. I mean, I mean, he got that sick knee to the head. That was awesome. But, you know, I'm excited. I mean, I really hope this doesn't make France feel like he hasn't got a great career ahead of him. Exactly. Because, uh, you know, his boxing was awesome. Some of those uppercuts, just a whisker away. Oh, those low Ooh. kicks, he smashed them in. His ground defense against such a great jiu-jitsu yeah. guy was awesome as well. He's going to be someone to watch for. Oh, for sure. Watch out for him. Ladies and gentlemen, into round number two, Gustavo Falsaroli took his opponent over to the right-hand side of the ring to the ropes. Kai Kora went through the ropes with no bad intention whatsoever from both fighters. His head unfortunately hit the table on the way out. Due to a head collision, he was unable to continue. Through no malice whatsoever from both fighters, they were competing they were competing with absolute uh, prosperity, but unfortunately this fight has to be ruled a no contest due to Kai Kara France being able to be continued after hitting his head on the table. So unfortunately, Nobody guys, that's, that's, that's the final ruling. I do not like that. I think Gustavo thought that's he had the W, but be made fair. The only thing I could say is rematch. In a ring. <laughs> I'll pass you over to Gustavo. All right, good. Okay, okay uh, no contest, Gustavo, no doubt you're upset. Uh, come over here, mate, we'll have a quick chat here. You, you, you were attacking him, you got him with a right-left combination. You need him in the head as you need him in the head. His head smashed onto the, uh, the table outside the ring there. Uh, unlucky, obviously no cage there to protect him from falling out. There's absolutely nothing you could do about it. Uh, what would you like to say about the fight and the decision? Uh, government. When the cage is going to be allowed here? Definitely years overdue here in Victoria. This is my life. I support my family and my job. I train really hard for this fight. And coming losing because the cage is not allowed here is bullshit. You know? I represent the country overseas. I represent Australia with pride in my heart. I came from Brazil to become Australian and be proud to say that. We need the cage! We definitely do, and for the safety of sport across Australia, Mixed Martial Arts does need a cage desperately. Uh, he was very good. We'll talk about the fight now. A 20-year-old, he was 450 outsider. Uh, he was extremely impressive on his feet. What did you think? Did he surprise you anyway? Uh, first, I want to say thanks to Kai to take the fight. You know, when I, when I decided to come back in Australia, there's not many fights. Come on, guys, reds up for him. Uh, tell the truth, I came. I came with a plan to use my BJJ with him. But uh, he's neutralized on, all the way on the ground. And in my point of view, you know, I'm not a judge. I'm here to fight. And in my fight experience, I knock him out before he's get out of the, off the, the ropes. He didn't, he didn't hit the ground. He didn't hit any table. Okay, but that's my opinion. That's my opinion. It's nothing against him. It's nothing against the judge. So I'm here to fight. There's no cast, no contest. That's fine. I will be back because this is my life, and I will be fighting with the pleasure to put a good show, and that's what I want to do. Gustavo, you came into the very heavily bandaged uh, left knee, which actually France did attack with various kicks there. Were you injured before you came to this fight? Yes. Uh, the preparation was going so far, one of the best preparations I've ever, ever, ever done in my life, you know. I'm really a professional fighter now, I just train full time, I teach a few classes in resilience and absolute, and uh, I want to say thanks for the dominance, adrenaline, absolute resilience, no limits, all the gyms that have been helping me out, you know, and uh, three, three weeks before the fight, I had a really serious injury, I was uh, crying tears and I couldn't really move my knee, and I thought uh, I probably wouldn't be able to fight. But I have, I've been waiting for so long, and I, I didn't really want to mention because, you know, if you lose, the excuses the knees. And I felt the knee doesn't matter, you know, when we step inside the cage, there's no injuries anymore. And I'm here to fight. Unfortunately, the result was that. Not against the guys, I'm sorry. If the result is done, it's done. I will be here to fight again. Thank you. Thank you, Kostafo. Come here. 
Uh, firstly, uh, how are you feeling about that? You did cop a heavy knee, and then you hit your head hard. Tell us about the ending of that fight. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry how it ended, uh, fans. It wasn't how I planned it. Uh, if you want a rematch, uh, set it up, let's do this. On the BetEasy.com.au, you come out a $4.50 outsider. I'm tipping BetEasy.com.au, you won't put you that much of an outsider. He dominated the first three minutes, but that last two minutes, that first round with your stand-up, where you really hurt him a couple of times, gave you a lot of confidence again in that second round. Yeah, I was just going to let the fight uh, play out naturally. I don't want to force anything. Um, all credit to Gustavo. This is a veteran right here. This is one of the reasons I started MMA. Um, it's, a, it's an honour to be in the ring with say, uh, one of my heroes. Kai Kara French, you're 20 years old. You've got a huge future in MMA. Uh, congratulations, no contest. It's very hard for these fighters to not come with a win or lose to get the payment. Uh, Gustavo, quickly. Uh, you know, we have a video. I really want, would like to see that video after the fight and see if he really hit the, the table. No, uh, it's been live uh, streamed on Epic Center TV. Uh, we'll ask our uh, director, Adam, uh, your quick comments just on that no contest decision. Uh, well, the comments are left up to the board. So it is what it is, and I think it'll be a good rematch. Thank you. One more round of applause, both for Kay Karakara and Gustavo Felcaroli.